November 22nd, 2013 marks 50 years since President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in Dallas, Texas. On that day, he was brought to Parkland Hospital, not far from where I'm sitting right now. On this, the 50th anniversary of his death, we have had the remarkable opportunity to reflect on Kennedy's life, examine the medical evidence pertaining to his death, and reflect on what this historic event means to us as both children of history and as plastic surgeons. Among the excellent content of this issue, you will find a handful of special topics and editorials that will help you gain a new understanding and insight into the assassination of JFK. On anniversaries such as 9-11 and this one, many of us reflect upon where we were and more importantly, how this may have influenced where we are going. I recall that I was 10 years old sitting in a small rural North Dakota elementary school as a fourth grader who hadn't really given much thought to the national events, but that day changed me dramatically. For more perspectives, we asked a score of renowned plastic surgeons re representing Mexico, China, Brazil, and America. Where were you on November 22, 1963? And encouraged our respondents to not just answer geographically, but philosophically as well. The collected responses proved that the events surrounding Kennedy's assassination, and more importantly, his legacy, have not been forgotten. I hope you will listen to these gathered voices to help frame your own reflections on this important event. To help frame our society's role, Ed Luce, Samuel Lin, and Larry Aye combined efforts to detail the plastic surgeon's role in trauma management today, ranging from JFK's ER treatment to the triage of the recent Boston Marathon bombing victims. By anchoring the discussion of plastic surgery and trauma cases with these historic events, I think you will be able to pay homage to the memories of those lost and also to understand the important role we as plastic surgeons have in the management of trauma, ranging from the 60s era surgical techniques to modern triage tools and technology. As many of you know, the medical evidence surrounding the facts and theories of the JFK assassination has been a long time professional interest of mine. I have been giving a lecture on this topic for several years. In this issue, I have published some of my thoughts for the first time. So join me in reading this article and together we can revisit the medical data of the assassination of JFK. In doing research for this issue, I had the distinct honor of discussing the events with someone who actually lived them, Dr. Robert McClellan, a renowned general surgeon and one of the first doctors called to trauma room one at Parker Memorial Hospital on that fateful day. We are so very grateful that Dr. McClellan was able to speak with us and even more pleased that we can share this interview with all of you via an exclusive video available on our iPad app and on prsjournal.com. Pushed the door open and walked into trauma room one and was horrified what I saw there immediately was President Kennedy lying on his back face up his bloody head and a shot, light shining down on him. I think you will find his accounts exacting, terrifying, and eye-opening. We will all arrive at the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination from different walks of life. We will all have different emotions and reactions to it. But it is truly my sincere hope that through this special issue of PRS, we can come together as a community, as a country, as a world to reflect on the impact of President Kennedy and to discuss the events of his death and to truly embrace the effect that one life can have on the world.